In this testing video, we're going to carry out the continuity of CPC and polarity check for a radial socket circuit wired from this distribution board here to six twin socket outlets within this workshop. In order to carry out the test, I'm going to use the Matrell MI3125 BT multifunction tester I have here. But why are we carrying out that continuity check? We're trying to prove that the green and yellow conductor, the CPC, sometimes called on site the earth, is continuous, in other words, not broken, from leaving the distribution board to get into each point in circuit. We're also going to include the polarity check at the same time. Now you can do this visually. I'd love your comments below if you're the sort of person that does a visual polarity check. However, for me, I'm going to use the instrument and prove that all three pin positions on the front of those socket outlets are in the correct rotation. So we have the earth pin, the liner and neutral connections, and we're also going to prove that the switch operates. But before I can start this test, I need to catch up and see where Rick is. Before Rick starts that testing process, we're going to take a moment just to contemplate what we're going to actually carry out and think about those parallel earth paths. And before then, let's have a look what today's biscuit is. So we have here a Fox's Fabulous Half-Coated Milk Chocolate Cookies. Sounds fabulous. All the best. Before it can undertake the test, we need to do the safe isolation procedure. However, I don't like to turn off the distribution boards on full load current, so I'm gonna knock off their overcurrent protection devices, but leave the lighting circuit on in the area. So when I find the MCB that feeds this distribution board, and when I turn it off, I'll have a visual clue that I've chosen the right MCB because the lights in that area will go off. Now we've done the safe isolation in two free training packages and I'll leave a link for those in the description. And they also go towards your annual CPD rather than running through that full process here. Even though I've seen the lighting circuit go off, I'm still gonna presume that this distribution board still could be live. So I'm gonna knock off the lights and the main switch. So in the event of taking this cover off and it's still being live, it will only be the terminals in the bottom of that main switch that actually would be live. And that's the point of which you would start to look to prove your safe isolation procedure. Remember those links are in the description. So once the cover is off, another top tip for you with those screws, especially in a college setting, is to return them back into the place where you took them out of it so you don't lose them in the future and find it very difficult at the end of maybe a lesson in order to put your consumer unit or distribution board cover back on. The circuit is protected by a 20 amp Type B RCBO with a 30 milliamp rating. So you can see I Delta N there as 30 milliamps. And it's also an A type RCD for this circuit. In order to carry out the test, I'm going to disconnect all of my conductors from the distribution board for that radial socket circuit. I know in the on-site guide and guidance notes three, it often shows a permanent link between the line connection disconnected to the earth bar where your CPC would be connected. I'm going to disconnect all of mine in order to carry out the continuity of CPC and polarity check on our radial socket circuit. Next up, we're going to remove the parallel earth paths created by the metal trunking and metal conduit because for the continuity test, we want to prove that that conductor is continuous from the distribution board to each of the outlets in circuit. By removing the socket outlet, which is also made of metal from the trunking, we remove the parallel earth path of the metal trunking, which will be earthed to the metal front of the socket. So therefore, when we carry out the test with it disconnected off the actual trunking, we'll be proving the conductor behind it is continuous and not the fact that we're connected to the trunking in front of it. You must make sure when doing the test also, the socket doesn't touch the trunking. Now, other parts of the circuit are slightly different because now we've got some couplers and we've got the earth fly lead. By removing the socket previously, we disconnected it from the earth created by the trunking. This time we're gonna to have to take the socket fronts off, keep them away from the boxes during the testing process, but also disconnect the fly lead that goes from the socket front to the socket back in order that we can prove during the continuity test it's the actual conductors that are continuous and not the metal work of the trunking and conduits. As we said, we're gonna include the polarity test at the same time, I'm required to link the neutral and the line conductor together in the distribution board as part of that test. Now we need to set up our Matrell tester. We've got the MI3125BT, we've powered it up, and we're ready now to put our lead in. I'm not gonna use a set of probes, I'm actually gonna use the plug-in lead that comes with the tester. So once that's in, I now need to find the actual test I want to carry out. Remember, we link together line and neutral. So we're looking at R1 plus Rn. There's R1 plus R2, which we're very familiar with. So we need to scroll through until we find the appropriate one. So R2, and there we have it. And we can see we've got the R1 plus Rn, and we've identified there that we're testing between those two points. 
we now need to remove the resistance of our lead. So that means we need to bridge out the line and neutral. And I often do this using a coin. So if I bring a coin in and bridge out my pins for line and neutral, and then I'm gonna do a continuity test on them to check I've connected between them by pressing the test button. And you see we get a reading there of 0 0.02 ohms. And if I press the help button under it, you can see Cal, this will calibrate it and it will remove the resistance offered up between those two points. So we're now ready to carry out the test between line and neutral as part of our polarity check. What do I like about this tester? Well, lots of things about this tester. However, look on the back there, there is a magnet. And then all this metal work around me makes it nice and easy just to put it into position before carrying out this test between the line and neutral. Remember, you won't be recording this reading, it's part of the polarity check. So as I turn it on, press the test button, I get a reading and I got a reading of 0 0.08 ohms. I operate the switch again. As part of the polarity check, you need to check that switch does operate. Now we're infinite or off the scale. Onto the other side, because again, the switch could have failed on this side. We press the test button again and you see we get a reading considerably different, don't we? So 0 0.02, we operate the switch, we repeat the test. I would suggest that's because there's maybe a little bit of contact resistance to overcome that. If we put the plug in and out a few times, it will clean up those connections within the socket. Press and test again, we see a reading now a lot closer to the 0 0.02 on the left hand side. Operate the switch again just to prove it does turn it off. And we've done part of the polarity check for that socket. We need to do all of them in circuit. I'm not gonna show you us performing this test at every point in the circuit, but it would be carried out at every point. Remember, we're not recording the reading, we're just doing it as part of that polarity check. So we're gonna do exactly the same process. We're gonna go in, we're gonna take a reading, we're gonna operate the switch, prove the switch works. We're gonna see it on both sides. Remember, you'd expect a very similar reading on both sides, which we didn't get at the first socket out there. And then we're gonna go all the way now, I'm gonna show the last point. So our readings are hopefully are getting higher from the first one to the next one we test. Now this is the last one and we've got a reading there of 0.12 of an ohm. We're checking that switch and we'll check the other side as well. So this is the last point on the radial circuit. We know that because there's only one line, neutral and circuit protective conductor in the back of the actual outlet itself. But that reading is not recorded, it's just part of the polarity check. In order to complete the polarity of the socket outlet, I need to test now between line and CPC. This will also generate my R1 plus R2 value, which I'll record in my test paperwork under the box heading continuity. We now need to set up our Matrell MFT tester in order to do the R1 plus R2 test. So we scroll through until we find it. Again, we're gonna remove the resistance of the leads. We've positioned a coin across the appropriate pins in the plug. We've pressed it, we've got 0.1 of an ohm. We press the calibration button, it will remove the resistance of the lead. And we're ready therefore to carry out that R1 plus R2 test. And you notice on the screen, it also shows us that we're measuring between the line and the protective earth during this test. Again, we're gonna start with the closest socket to the distribution board, and we expect the readings to increase as we move further away. So first one is 0 0.03, when we're measuring between the line and the CPC, remember it's disconnected from the trunking, which was a parallel earth path. And we're gonna do both both sides of the socket out there as well, because we need to prove that that switch will operate. And then once we've finished the test, we do need to leave both the switches in the on position for a test we're gonna carry out in a different video. We continue this test on all the socket outlets on the circuit. Remember, we're looking for the highest reading we achieve to be recorded as our R1 plus R2 value. We had 0 0.06 ohms there because we are further away from the distribution board. Therefore, there is more circuit cable and it's that circuit cable that is offering resistance. So we expect to get our highest reading at the furthest point of a radial circuit. We've now worked our way to the furthest point in a radial circuit where we expect to get the highest reading because it's the longest amount of cable to get to that point. However, whichever reading was the highest would be the one that you record. And we operate in the switch, we're doing that polarity check. Remember, polarity is proving the positions of those pins. By testing between the line and neutral first, and then the line and CPC second, we've proved that all three pin positions must be correct. By proving two of three, you actually prove all three are in the right place. So we can now record our reading for our R1 plus R2 value, R1 being the resistance of the line conductor, which we measured, added to the resistance of the circuit protective conductor, which was R2, as 0 0.13 of an ohm in the appropriate box in our test paperwork. We can also tick the polarity box. We did it through measurement, didn't we? in order that we prove the three pin positions were line, neutral, and the protective conductor. Remember, if you do it visually, you must look at both the cable colors, two browns and two blues, but also the L and N in the accessory to prove visually polarity is correct. Just a case now getting the fly leads reconnected and the covers back on. Be really interested in your thoughts and comments. Do you use fly leads when you've got two fixed lugs in electrical accessories? Please make sure you leave those comments below as well. 
But you're just saying, I did this and I did that a lot. Yeah, I did, well, didn't in I? in fact, I think I did it all, didn't I? We did most of it. I'm going to go get some biscuits. While Rick goes off to choose the biscuits that we're going to have in our next video, a little tease for that, as I look inside the distribution board, I can see all three conductors are disconnected on this radial socket circuit. However, one of them needs to be connected in order that we can carry out the insulation resistance test. And if you want to find out what that is, check out the video on screen just there.